for this cause, Elohim shall send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom! Thank you so much for joining us here at Remnant House, the home of the strong and the very courageous. And Mom and I are always delighted every week when you join us on the Sabbath day, remembering to keep it holy. Amen and amen. Always grateful for all of you who join us here on the chat. Uh, thankful for every one of you and always encouraged by your words, uh, your comments, your uh, exhortations one to another. We get to read those and we, we really delight in how you all encourage one another and strengthen one another and, and we need that. How many know the Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting, which means to encourage one toward an end. That's what exhort means. So it's not just a general hippie hooray. It's an encouragement toward an end. So exhort one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And by the way, you can't exhort people you don't know. You got to know them enough to know where they're going so you can encourage them to get there. Yeah. So it requires relationship. Uh, you have to know where they're headed. So you can say, come on, you can make it. Come on, you can do it. And let's say they're moving, right? And they're, and they're having a tough time moving and it's a struggle. You could exhort them and say, come on, we're going to come help you move and you're going to make it. You're going to be fine. You're going to do great. There's a whole lot of people going, I don't want to help anybody move <laughs> until you're moving. Then you want help. Come on now. You got to sow it. You got to reap it. Amen. You want to sow some moving, you get reap some moving. You want to sow blessing, you reap the blessing. And some of you need to help some people move because you're about to move. Some of you are going to be asked by the Ruach to help somebody move. You don't even know it, but that's going to be sowing into your move. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. And amen. So, you know, we have to be a, a people that know one another enough to know what it is inside them that we want to encourage. Sometimes people just get a general encouragement. That doesn't really hit. doesn't really land. But when somebody who knows you, okay, somebody who knows where you're going, that person calls you up and says, come on now, rub some dirt on it. We're getting there. We're going there. That's a different thing, isn't it? Right? Because they know where you're going. They know what you're called to do. They know what you're here on the planet sucking wind for. Amen? They know you're on this planet for a reason, and they want to exhort you or encourage you to accomplish the will of Yahuwah Elohim in your life. Amen and amen. And so today I want to talk to you about the strong delusion. How many know that the Bible says Elohim sends strong delusion? We're going to get in there today because I believe a lot of people have fallen for the strong delusion. And fallen is a good word. Um, they fell for it. Uh, and as a result, now they're marked. This mark is irretrievable and irreversible. Amen. We now have two groups of people on the planet, and it's irreversible. So I don't care what anybody says. There's a bunch of liars out there talking about, you know, collation and all kinds of, you know, removing hard things. Right now. No. If you got the mark of the beast, it's not something you can rub off. Amen. So uh, it's a dangerous time, and because people do not know the difference between the clean and the unclean, they couldn't make a good evaluation. They were fooled by that. So that information had to be removed from you so that then you could be put in front of a choice without knowing which one was clean and which one was unclean. Because you don't love the truth, you didn't know which one to choose. 
Those who love the truth could easily navigate that choice because they could see, what's this that you're asking me to do? Oh, that's a violation of Torah. End of conversation. That's an end of conversation right there. We're all done. Because once it violates the Torah, that's it. Not everybody has that though, right? Some people, it's like it violates the Torah. Mm, well, I might still be interested. <laughs> okay? That's, that's lukewarm. I mean, and so that's, that says that person has already fallen for a strong delusion. Not going to fall for, already did. They already did. And I want to tell you, there's many strong delusions that have been released since the writing of First Thessalonians. Uh, and, and now we're seeing grand delusions uh, going out there. And, you know, frankly, our enemy is deluded. I may know the devil's deluded. If he thinks he's going to win, he's deluded. Come on, somebody help me now. If he thinks he's going to run the earth, <laughs> he's deluded. If he thinks he gets the next thousand years, <laughs> he's deluded. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many know they all, a lot of people brought strong delusion. They think they're running things. They think they're in charge. They don't even know they just disqualified themselves. We we're going to get there today. Amen. In Genesis chapter 49, we see prophetic word being given concerning the tribes. And I want to share this because I want to I want to encourage those of you that are wondering what in the world is going on here. I mean, are we is this going to continue down this road? Are we headed toward this disastrous road that is obvious that certain people that want to take you down a certain road? Right. And Yahoo is saying, I didn't put them in charge. If he didn't authorize it, he will oppose it. Amen. So just understand that. In Genesis chapter 49 and verse 9 says, Yahuda is a lion's well. So where will the where will the authority be? It will be in Yahuda. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter. Everybody say the scepter. The scepter. The scepter means the rule of power and authority in a kingdom. So that is the scepter. The scepter is the power. The scepter shall not depart from Yehuda. Any questions? There you have it. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> now we all know who the lion of the tribe of Yehuda is, right? So we know he is king. Amen. And that is our king. That is my king. And the tribe of Yehuda is camped in the east. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so in the east is the, is the house of Yehuda, and Yehuda has the scepter, and Yehuda is saved first. Saved first, according to the scripture. So Yehuda gets saved and camps in the east and holds the spot waiting upon the king. The king's authority shall never leave there. And so this is something that you need to understand because there's a bunch of imposters running around the earth pretending they're in charge. Pretending they have power, pretending they have authority. And the only reason why they do is because the heathen revere them. The heathen look up to them. The heathen gave them this power. The problem with that heathen power is the heathen can take it from them. <laughs> How many know the heathen can decide tomorrow they don't like you no more? <laughs> and all of a sudden, we got Kazakhstan going on in your life, right? And so, but where will the scepter never depart? No matter what mankind says, no matter how upset people get, the scepter will never depart from Yehuda. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now there's a whole lot they don't believe or understand about the gathering. And so the gathering unto him will occur. Uh, we are all waiting for the arrival of the king of glory. And that arrival creates that final gathering. But even before that, there are rehearsals, which is why a lot of people are finding themselves gathering together now. Amen. Because we're rehearsing until the coming of the king. Amen. And in Psalm 47 and verse 7, it says, For Elohim is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Elohim reigneth over the heathen. Elohim sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. Are you seeing this today? Mm -hmm. The prince of the people are gathered together, even the people of the Elohim of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto Elohim. He is greatly exalted. Are you seeing this today? Mm -hmm. He is greatly exalted. 
And so the princes of the people will be gathering together. This is the promise in the Psalms. And we know that this happened already in the past and it will happen again. As the people unite in Mashiach, coming together, uniting in the kingdom because he has the scepter, right? So the scepter we know will not leave Yehuda, and he is the king of Yehuda, right? He sits on David's throne, which is the kingdom of Israel, all 12 tribes, including Yehuda. And he is, of course, the great prince of princes, the great king of kings, the great lord of lords. Amen and amen. And so he tells us that the, all the princes, all the high ones in the kingdom will be gathered together and uh, all will give praise and honor unto Yahuwah Elohim. And so what is it that causes this? This is a result of the pursuit of the truth, pursuit of knowledge, pursuit of understanding, even as it says that we are to pursue understanding, right? And so we are to understand and walk in praises for his holiness uh, and sit upon uh, that, that he um, sits upon the throne of his holiness. So these are all things that we have to come to understanding on and respect. One of the challenges that we all face is it's a very, uh, this world is, is a world that's easy to become disrespectful. And one of the most offensive things that you can do is be disrespectful. This not only applies to Elohim, it applies to one another. Amen. In fact, I would suggest that you know, if you heard somebody say, if you had a choice between somebody saying, I love you versus I respect you, I think most people would say, I take the respect you because we know people that say you love me, but don't respect me. Don't treat with respect, right? Mm -hmm. And so we need that. And in the same way, we need to have respect for what Yahoo is doing in the earth right now because each person is going through their own private deliverance, if you will, as they're coming into an encounter with the truth. You know, when you wake back up and you get lights turned on, you start really, you start realizing where you are. That's what awakening does. And so that's what's happening in the earth today. And he tells us that the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim who spoke and performs, a man whom Abraham believed by faith, and it was accounted unto him as righteousness, is that same, the same Elohim is a shield of the earth, belong to and, and he is the one who is greatly exalted now Elohim is calling all of his sanctified ones is this everybody no many are called few are chosen and so he's calling his sanctified ones or his set apart people and he is causing others to be marked so these this great separation which we all knew would occur is manifesting now before I get too far, let's just stop quickly in Isaiah and see that he speaks concerning this. In chapter 13 and verse 3, it says, I have commanded my sanctified ones. I've also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. So you see, we were, we were called um, to uh, rejoice and, and celebrate praises at the throne of his holiness. And now he says, they rejoice in my highness, the noise of a multitude in the mountains, are you hearing this? The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. Yahuwah of hosts, Musrish the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even Yahuwah and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. How ye, for the day of Yahuwah is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. And so he's speaking concerning the multitude that is on the earth today, because we are yet to see the full manifestation of the day of Yahuwah, right? And so he says, I've commanded my sanctified ones. I've also called my mighty ones for mine anger. So many are finding themselves as they get separate and they begin to intercede, they're encountering his fury. They're encountering a furious Messiah. They're encountering a furious, Elo furious Elohim. And, and they're praying and they're finding him inconsolably angry. And so 
Who's finding this out? The sanctified ones, the ones that are set apart, and they're calling on him. He says, I've also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. And so those that do love him are catching this and going, oh, oh boy. Oh, he met, he's, he's really furious. Okay, I, I don't even want to say the other word because the other word means crazy. He's furious. All right, he is, he is angry. And, and here he comes. And it says, and the noise of a multitude is in the mountains. And of course, we know that mountains mean authority or kingdoms, right? So mountains mean authority. And he says plural. And then he goes on to say, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms. So there's a lot of noise in the kingdoms. Are you hearing it today? Uh, gathered together, Yahuwah hosts, Musrit, the host of the battle. And so there's a lot of talk about nations working together, but not with him. There's a lot of talk about nations becoming part of a new order, but not without, but without him. They're talking about the future and governing the countries and the world without him. Are you catching this? Okay. So his, his hot anger is increasing as they continue to pretend that he's not there, that their decisions are all that matter. And so what is it that he has said? Well, let's take a look at something he promised. Look at Isaiah 62 and verse 8. It says, Yahuwah hath sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies, and the sons of the strangers shall not drink thy wine, for the which thou hast labored. Listen to what's going on here. It's the Lord of the Sabbath, and he's furious. But that they have gathered it, shall eat it, and praise Yahuwah, and they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. So this is a picture of his restoring of the appropriate worship and the appropriate bringing together of his people, those things that they shall gather together to enjoy. Amen. And he says, go through, go through the gates, prepare you the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highway, gather out of the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Lift up a standard for the people. I love it. Behold, Yahuwah hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, say ye to the daughter of Zion, behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. Woo! Hallelujah. Mm. And I can feel him. He is he is saying in the spirit, I am coming. I am going to bring judgment upon all the wicked and establish the kingdom for the righteous. And see, saints, those that want to argue with him, debate with him, you can stand outside. He is not playing with the world. But of course, they take it lightly, don't they? They take lightly the judgments of Yahuwah Elohim. They always have. They always have. They always will until he comes. When he arrives, then they're like, oh, you were serious about that. Watch. Watch, you'll see. And only the sanctified ones will get it. But he says, but they that have gathered it shall eat it. So he is saying to those that have been making slaves out of all humanity, his arrival puts an end to all of it. That's how we know they can make all the plans they want. They haven't read Psalm 2. He sits in the heavens and laughs at the plans of men. Go ahead and make your plan. Go ahead and make your plan. You're going to rule over yourselves. You're not ruling over any of the redeemed. I'm going to tell you that right now. Some of you haven't figured it out yet. They just disqualified themselves. Went ahead and poisoned themselves. Amen. And then he tells us, he says, go through, go through the gate. So there's, there, remember he told us the gates of hell shall not prevail. We're to go through those gates. We're to go press this fight. Amen. Prepare you the way of the people. Cast up. Cast up the highway. The highway of holiness. Amen. Set apartness. Sanctified people. Sanctified by the truth. His word is the truth. And so he tells us to lift up the standard. Who is the standard? Mashiach. And what is Mash and Mashiach is the word. <laughs> it just ties all back together. His Torah continues to be exalted. Amen and amen. amen. And we see so many people that have bought strong delusion. They bought lies. They bought that these things don't matter. Then why would there be judgment? If these things don't matter and grace was something you can spread on the world like butter on bread, then in that case, there should be no judgments. Amen. 
But how many know that there's no grace on robots? There's no grace for salvation on the marked. That grace is over now. The grace was to keep you from it. Once you cross that line, that's it. All, the scripture has to be fulfilled now. And all that's prepared for them is the lake of fire. Amen? Which is why we need to understand that his word is absolute. And there's a whole lot of people that thought it was, a, it was subjective. And they're about to find out. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. And there's plenty that would love to argue. They can argue. Doesn't change the fact that he's still going to bring that judgment. So their arguments won't last and won't survive. In Ezekiel chapter 39, and again, Ezekiel is a prophetic book. It is like the book of Revelation of the old of the of the of the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? In terms of the Old Testament, uh, Ezekiel is the one that foretells and talks about the coming of the kingdom. And so we have to take some of Ezekiel and look at fulfillments and also understand that he continues to give light. But as you look at Ezekiel chapter 39, you're going to see in verse 22 that he promises the entire house of Israel, not Yehuda. So we made a little quick distinction there because Yehuda is, of course, the tribe that Mashiach is from. And this is where the lawgiver is, right? But the house of Israel is represented by the 10 northern tribes. And the house of Israel was what was scattered. So remember that Mashiach said, I am not called, but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'll say that again. Mashiach said, I am not called, I am not sent, but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So who's he after? The lost sheep of the house of Israel, which you are. You're part of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You say, how do I know that I'm part of the lost sheep? You're listening to this broadcast. Amen. The fact that you're even drawn to things like this, the fact that you're even drawn to the things of the kingdom, says your DNA is calling. Amen. Don't let them steal it from you, though. Ezekiel chapter 39 and verse 22, So the house of Israel shall know that I am Yahuwah, their Elohim, from, the, from that day and forward, and the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hands of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Therefore thus saith Yehoah Elohim, now, because the time is past, now will I bring again the captivity of Yaakov and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. Mm. I'll be jealous for my holy name after that they have borne their shame and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safely in their land and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations. Are you seeing where he's going? Mm -hmm. Then, everybody say then. Then. Then shall they know. <laughs> Then shall they know that I am Yahuwah their Elohim, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land and have left none of them anymore there. Not one. Amen and amen. So rejoice in that he does not lose a single one of the house of Israel. And so you need to connect to the house of Israel. Find your fold. In Jeremiah 23, he says he was going to raise up shepherds so that his people would return to their folds and be fruitful and increase. Now, there's some people that have been so jaded and so offended and so hurt by the fake pastors out there that he speaks about in Jeremiah 23, 1 and 2. They're so offended by them. They threw out everything, right? They threw out the baby and the bathwater. Yeah. And so we need to recover what's recovered and lose what is not authorized. And I don't take advice from the homeless. So some of you be careful out there because there's some homeless people who do not have a house, who do not have a family that they're a part of, and they're trying to give you advice. Be careful with that. 
Don't take advice from people who are themselves homeless. Amen? They need to find their fold and their place where they belong. He sets the members in the body as it pleases him. And we are members one of another. So for anyone who has a problem with being a member of one another, and another, they have a problem with the scripture, not with me. Right. Amen. Right. And what is holy is holy. It is always holy. And so let us always remember that we do not get to determine that. There's a reason why he gives apostles first, prophets second, teachers third. Teachers are very strong. They still sometimes need to be corrected, just so you know. So there's a reason why he brings the apostolic, because he has a word of knowledge vessel. He has a word of wisdom vessel. A little different than the teacher. In Psalm 9, um, you're going to see where the heathen are right now. And they don't realize how much trouble they're in. But they're in beyond, they're way, way, way beyond where they think they are. So here it is, clear as day. Psalm 9, verse 15. Nine. Verse 15, here we go. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. Yahuwah is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the works of his own hands. Higaon Selah. So we need to see this, right? So quickly go back. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. So this, what you're seeing, and it says, And the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget Elohim. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget Elohim. So he gave them all a chance to decide what they were going to do, and time ran out. Time is running out, right? So when he gets to the end, now it's time for judgment. This is not the time you go back and fix your answers. You either did the right thing or you didn't. And so... Here comes the judgment on the nations. And he says that the, that the wicked shall be turned into hell. So here we go. This is lake of fire time, saints. He says the heathen are sunk down in the pit which they made. So they made their own pit. And now they're trying to talk you into going into that pit. They're trying to talk you into joining them in a the pit. Now how many know this is, this? you know, you can't reach them. You cannot reach them. There's a point at which you can get people saved. There's a way you can minister to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know they're not the lost sheep of the house of Israel because they ran right into that ditch. So don't think, oh, we missed one. No, he doesn't miss any. He is not going to lose a single one. So if they're in that ditch, he didn't want them out. Unless he draws them, they cannot come. I'm going to show that to you here. The Shia clears this up, saints. And so you're going to watch this continued separation because what you're watching is their strong delusion. What you're watching is their strong delusion. So for them to think that, you know, they're, they're going to prosper, they're, doing, they're sunk down in a pit, they made themselves because they did not love the truth. Amen? And that's just going to continue, saints. That's not getting any better. In Matthew 13... Messiah put forth a parable. And this is a critical parable for today because he's speaking concerning what is happening now amongst the people. And he says in Matthew 13 and verse 24 in another parable, put he forth unto them saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did it not thou sow good seed in thy field? And from whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first. Everybody say first. First. First the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. What's this now? Gather you together first the tares and bind them to, in bundles to burn them. Bind them. Bind them. Bind them. They are bound by legal obligations. They are bound by mandates. They are bound by requirements. Bound, bound, bound. But gather the wheat into my barn. 
who are not bound, but are set free. And how do you get set free? You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free, right? Amen. Amen. And so these are not free. They are being gathered up. Notice that the tares are gathered first. That's exactly how it plays out. He doesn't gather the wheat first. First, he gathers the tares. So make sure they're marked properly. Make sure that they are, in fact, tares. Let's be clear about what is a tear, right? Let's make sure that we keep that clear, demarcation. That way, I can remove all the tares once I've marked them all. And then all that will remain will be that which we retain in the barn. And there are no barns in the city. The barns are always in the country. So, <laughs> so you're going to see a lot of people in the country. I mean, and he says to the, to the disciples, this is how come they don't always out and they didn't out false prophets and false teachers. Uh, you have to use a lot of discernment to discern the right, the true from the false. And the reason why is because Messiah specifically ordered them not to do that. He specifically said, leave it alone. So that's why they didn't out certain people. Because they were told, leave it alone until the harvest. The angels will sort this out. And have confidence in Elohim. His promise is not going to come back void. If he said he's not losing a single member of the house of Israel, count on it. Count on it. He's not losing a single one. So anyone that he has marked as the house of Israel, if he's, he's, he counts that person as one of his, y'all, can, you can run. <laughs> Go ahead and run. <laughs> this ought to be fun. We'll watch the hound of heaven chase you down. <laughs> You can't run. There's no place to go. Once he's chosen you, oh, he's pulling you. He's pulling you. Oh, he'll have an argument with you, but he'll pull you. Oh, he'll have a talk with you, but he'll pull you. You will not win that argument, but he will pull you. Ask Jonah. Just saying. I mean, <laughs> you will not win, but he will pull you. Once he's decided you're his, that's it. He's coming for you. And some of you, you run, you're trying to outrun grandma's prayers. You're trying to outrun your mama's prayers, your auntie's prayers. Some of the saints out here going, they ain't going nowhere. Mama got them. <laughs> Mama's like, mm-mm. Uh-uh. No, I done prayed over you. And promises are yay and amen. I'm just going to wait here till he snatches you up. Amen. amen. And then that's why things go the way they go in their lives. Amen. Because I mean, no. when he gets on it, he may as well go ahead and just give it up. When he says you're his, you're his. And he's going to go and he's going to come for you in every which way. Amen? Amen. But those that are tares, there's nothing they can do. They can't become wheat. Let me help you out. Because there's a lot of you that are going to groan and moan about the tares. You're going to moan about the people that don't have an ounce of humility in them. They're not humbling themselves. They are not wheat. Right? These will be gathered and put in barns. And saints... Don't don't lament the tares. They never could become wheat. A tear cannot get saved and become wheat. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Okay? The wheat gets saved because it's wheat. I know that's deep, but stay with me, church. The wheat gets saved because it's wheat. Come on now, one more time. The wheat gets saved because it's wheat. Oh, that's good. That's true. Okay? He saves the house of Israel because you're the house of Israel. I mean, you can't fake that. There's a lot of people trying. But guess what? On arrival, they will not bend. Always be looking for that. I look for it. I look for humble. All of my brethren are humble. Every one. Not a single exception. Every brother and every sister I have are humble people. Humble people that beat themselves up more than anybody would ever have to beat them up. Correct themselves. Rebuke yourself. That's my brothers and sisters. They rebuke themselves, amen? Or maybe you're one of those people that are like, man, you don't even know. Holy Spirit's been, Ruach's been on me about this and that. That's my brother. The Ruach's been kicking my butt. That's my sister, amen? Oh, you don't even know, Peter. I had to fix this. I had to fix that. You know why? Because you ain't under strong delusion. That's why. 
You know why you're getting rebuked? You know why you're getting corrected? You know why you're seeing things you need to repent for? Because you're not under strong delusion. That's why he's cleaning you up. He's presenting to himself a bride that is without spot or without wrinkle. He said he would do that. Amen. He's coming himself to present to himself a bride without spot or wrinkle. So he's going to come. And he's going to tell you things that you need to repent of and rebuke and, and admonish you. If he's admonishing you because he loves you, he chastises his sons. Go ahead and rejoice outside. Go ahead and dance. Go ahead and say, oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, come on now. He rebuking me because I need it. Because I'm a son. Because I'm a daughter. Because he's expecting high things from me. Oh, come on now. Get out from underneath that delusion and stay away from those who are. Amen. He said to you to depart, to come out of there, right? And he also said to not be near them because you become a partaker of their ways. And you go take your place, what did he say? With the hypocrites. He said, go take your place with the hypocrites. You want to be with them so bad? Go ahead. There's going to, a whole lot of people are going to be like, oh no, I don't want to be with these people. Amen. Discern that now. Discern that now. Amen. And so if you're the house of Israel, don't be hanging out with tares. Just saying. Amen. <laughs> I'm thinking amen. And so what's he doing? He's bringing his perfect love. His perfect love is going to cast out things that don't belong in your life. All produced by fear. 100% of them. And perfect love does what to fear? All right. Now, some people don't believe me. First John chapter four. And verse 18, it says, there is no fear in love. See that? There is no fear in love. A perfect love casts out fear because fear hath what? Torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If any man say, I love Elohim, and hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how could he love Elohim who he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth his Elohim Love his brother also. Now, by the way, not everybody's your brother. Your brothers are the members of the house of Israel. Amen. That's your brother and your neighbor. Amen. So be careful with that because the heathen will try to tell you that those apply to them. And that's not true. Those words apply to your family. To those that, who is my brother, my sister, my mother? What was that? Yeah. Messiah cleared that up. Who is my brother, my sister, my mother? They who hear the word of Yahuwah Elohim and do it. Amen and amen. And in 2 Thessalonians, here's the proof text we're coming to for the end of today. And he says to us that we need to understand the coming of our master. And that that coming is permanent change. So some of you crying for change. You're like, oh, Father, we need to change the world. The world's needing it. He's bringing change. The kind of change he's bringing is complete change. Amen and amen. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our master, Yahushua HaMashiach, and by our gathering together unto him. So this is the gathering unto Shiloh, until Shiloh come, right? So the same gathering unto him, the very same thing. That you not be soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us as that day of Messiah is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. So they could not see this day, except there come a falling away first, an apostasia, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is Elohim, or that is worship, so that he as Elohim sitteth in the temple of Yahuwah, showing himself that he is Elohim. All right, so we're going to stop there for a quick sec and take a look at this because, again, this is a very important passage, especially now in this hour. And first of all, we don't want to be shaken in our mind or trouble because this is how the enemy takes advantage of the saints. So this word is a good word. Don't let this trouble you. Don't let yourself become over troubled, right? Don't watch so many videos that you get upset. Don't do that. Just calm down, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by video on YouTube, okay? Neither by letter as from us is the day of Messiah is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, so that day shall not come, except what? There come a falling away first. So what he's describing is what you've just seen. Um, you, I believe, just saw this in worldwide. Because again, this was the big test. And this had to happen for people to make a choice. 
and they did. And the fakes were revealed and the true were revealed. The true had to be courageous. And they still do. I mean, I mean, I told you courage would be required. Didn't I tell you courage would be required? Yes. Yeah, well, was I right? <laughs> you need your courage, right? So you need to, but love gives you courage. Don't worry. You just stay in love. I mean, and so he tells us, he says, the man of sin is be revealed, the son of perdition. So some of you are still struggling with who that is. I mean, you're going to find, you're going to figure it out as you meditate on it, but it's already been revealed. So the fact that it hasn't been revealed to you doesn't mean that it's not been revealed. Right. Just saying. Okay, so that falling away has to be a falling away from the king and the kingdom, from all that which he commanded, and it has to be permanent. So how do we know that? Because any other falling away could be repented of. Amen. A man, a righteous man falls seven times and repents and gets back up. Why is this different? Because this is the falling away they can't come back from. That's why it's different. This is not your typical somebody backslid or fell away from the kingdom. No, this backsliding is permanent. They are marked. Amen. And that's why there's no coming back from this one. And of course... Uh, there are many spirits that have exalted themselves above all that is called Elohim. Um, there are imposter Mashiachs. So Matthew 24's promise has come to pass. Messiah said, many will come in my name saying, I am Christ, I am Mashiach. Well, he was right. And there are some imposters who would have you baptized in their names, mm -hmm. who would oh, say that they're your savior, mm -hmm. who would say that if you don't sing praises to them, you're not saved, mm -hmm. except they're not the savior. The angel that was sent did not say that name. That's right. So they can't claim that. Sorry. Amen. And that's part of the strong delusion that you're seeing right now. And if you scroll down to, to uh, verse 7, we're going to jump down there real quick in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And it says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. So there's a mystery going on that people just can't seem to get and only the redeemed seem to understand iniquity and many will come up to him in that day saying lord lord did we not prophesy in thy name did in thy name cast out devils and in thy name do many great and magic works and he's going to say depart from me you worker of iniquity i never knew you because they didn't understand the mystery of iniquity or lawlessness which doth already work only he now who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way and then, everybody say then. Yeah. Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom Yahuwah shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. How is he destroyed? The brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. What, say that again. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. So is this in the redeemed? No. Is this among the saints? No. Is this in the house of Israel? No. Who is this with? Them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, and for this cause, so because they love not the truth, this is the cause that caused Elohim to send them strong delusion when he had offered them the gospel of the kingdom. They rejected that. So then he sent them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Okay? So this is what happens when you reject the things that Yahuwah is giving you. Then he sends, he says, okay, but what do you want instead? You want to believe lies? No problem. Here comes some lies. You won't believe the truth. Here comes some lies. And sure enough, a spirit of strong delusion has hit people. Such that if you even so much as tell them the name the angel said, the name nailed to the cross, the name by which the Pharisees were incensed, Amen. The name they prohibited from it pre from you preaching it. If we tell people that name and we speak about it, you should see the reaction we get. You would think they would rejoice going, oh, we found the pathway of salvation. We found the right way to get water baptized for salvation. No, they get angry. They're incensed. 
because you're rebuking their unrighteousness. You're showing them a spot and a wrinkle. And they don't want to see it because they don't love him. See that? So that tells you a lot. If you show a wrinkle to someone trying to get married, they will not only get rid of the wrinkle, they will thank you for showing it to them. I mean, thank you so much. I didn't even see that there. Oh, could you get it out? Can you help me get it out? Yeah. Oh, they get the stain. Oh, okay, good. Whew. You'll feel better. You would never get mad at somebody getting a stain out of your suit or your dress. Right. I've gotten married. I know. I wanted my suit to look good. <laughs> I think it did. I think it I look good. very nice. I think I look very handsome. You look very, nice. <laughs> very smooth. I'm saying, I'm saying, right? So what is strong delusion examples? Before I go, I wanted just to give you this before you take off for your Shabbat. I want you to think about some of the ways in which we can fall for strong delusions. Strong delusions is lies that get crusted over. In other words, you know when he challenged it. So because nobody challenged it, it just sticks until your neighbor comes to examine it. It remains sort of true. Like people believe it because nobody said anything, right? Like, for example, here's one that you hear a lot. That you might hear in churchianity, there are no more Levites. How many have heard there are no more Levites? Yeah. Right? Oh, well, it didn't transfer to the fivefold, and the Levites are the only ones. That... Can I just help you out here before you get yourself in a whole lot of trouble? In the book of Ezekiel, there's several chapters that talk only about the Levites and the Zadok and how important they are for the millennial kingdom. There's no way it's possible that there are no Levites on the earth. When they're expected to function during the millennial kingdom, which is about to start. Wow, wow, wow. There you go. So, as we say around here, that's a good point. It's a very good point. <laughs> that's very a good point. good point. That's something we say around here. When somebody makes a good point, we say, that's a good point. <laughs> okay? Uh, so, no Levites. Some people believe this strong delusion that there's no Levites, therefore there's no tithe. Strong delusion, and I will not talk them out of it. I will leave you there. Yes, I will, because that's precious to me. I don't like to push that one. Yeah. You either get it or you don't. Yeah. And I don't want to talk anybody into it. Because this one is so, the way he teaches this particular lesson is so intimate to him. You just don't make me cry. I love my king, okay? Uh, how about no feast? So therefore, no rehearsals. But some people, they, they're under strong delusion. They don't, they don't honor the feast and they don't do any rehearsing. Well, how are you going to be ready for a wedding if you don't rehearse? Just saying. Um, how many, here's another strong delusion. The Sabbath is any day you want it to be. Yeah. Well, I can make my Sabbath any day I want. No, you can't. There's no need to remember the Sabbath day. You can just make it up. Oh, right. Kaboom. I mean, see, that's a strong delusion. That's a stronghold. Um, here's another one that you get out of churchianity. Here's one that's directly rebuked by Apostle John, but they still preach it. I don't know how they do it, but keeping commandments is bondage. <laughs> that's a strong delusion, saints. Whereas the Bible says, anyone who says they know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. So you see which one of those is the strong delusion. It's believing that keeping commandments is somehow bondage. Amen? When he that keepeth the Torah, happy is he. Everybody that I know that keeps his commandments is a delighted person. They're much happier than they were before. So I don't know where people get this bondage thing. But again, strong delusion. Uh, here's another strong delusion. Supernatural is not for today. That's a massive strong delusion. A lot of people believe that. They don't believe in the supernatural. Okay. Stand by. You're going to need the supernatural to get through these next days. So if you don't believe in the supernatural, boy, oh boy, are you at a disadvantage. Here's another one. You don't need to be water baptized to get saved. Wow. Wow. Talk about arrogant. When the apostle said that you need to be baptized in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach for the remission of sins that you might receive the indwelling of the Ruach HaKodesh. So who has it right? Does Apostle Peter have it right, quoting Messiah, who told him to go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them? Is he right, or is this strong delusion right? 
Well, you don't have to worry about it. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. This said the lukewarm. Mm. I mean. Mm. How about, here's another one. There are no folds, said the homeless. <laughs> I don't listen to the homeless when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, it's just silliness. Let's just be honest. I don't take advice, financial advice, uh, on how to manage, you know, stocks and bonds from people that don't own any. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't take, a, uh, you know, investment advice from people with no investments. <laughs> So why should you take house advice from people with no house? Why should you take marital advice from people with no marriage? That's true. Don't take fold advice from people with no fold. Right. Salah. There are no folds. <laughs> this ties to my last strong delusion. Maybe you guys can come up. Put some comments in, this, in the description of any strong delusions you can think of that you've encountered. Here's my last one I'm going to give you because I know this is one of my favorite ones that I run across all the time and this one is going to be so severely regretted it's not even funny how bad this one's going to be regretted this particular strong delusion i don't need no stinking shepherd yeah, yeah. i don't need no stinking shepherd it's just me and your heart. that's all like you're abraham i got news for you he did not raise up shepherds just so that people would say i don't need no stinking shepherd okay there's a lot of people that he's going to rebuke for that. A lot. Because even if you're so strong that the shepherd has no benefit to you personally, you know everything the shepherd knows. You're just as smart as them, just as anointed, right? And you say, what do I need the shepherd for? Maybe the reason why you're connected to that shepherd is not because you need them necessarily, but because maybe they need you. And maybe the people in that fold need your help and your anointing. And here we are just talking about what we need instead of what we're going to do for others. And there's a whole lot of people that that's how they figure out where they belong. Oh, based on what it benefits them. But saints, the reason why you might be in that fold is not because you needed that pastor. Not because you needed apostle so-and-so to be your leader. Because that gave you place to function in and under authority to be a blessing. That way, when the king comes, you get to show him the fruit of your gift. Now, let me have you, let me slow you down just a second here, because that's going to be much harder to do without your brethren. So all you lone rangers who say, I don't need no stinky shepherd, I look forward to seeing how you report in, how you love your neighbor like yourself. Oh, yeah. That ought to be an interesting conversation. I'm going to be standing with my house at least 50 feet away. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every one of these, my brethren. I thank you for every one of the strongholds that you are destroying so that they will not fall for strong delusion and believe a lie, but instead that they love the truth, pursue it with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, and continue to serve you with everything they have. Father, I thank you that you cause us to see through the lies of the devil, those lies meant to take us into destruction and perdition. Let us not fall to the, to the games and the cons and the scams that the devil is running. And Father, let us not be counted among those who fall for the strong delusion which you said you would bring. Let us be accounted worthy to escape delusion. Let us be accounted worthy, I pray, to know the truth and be set free. I pray for light in the minds of my brothers and sisters who hear this broadcast. And I pray you set them free in Messiah's holy name, that they would lack no good thing in this hour. And I pray, Father, that you would heal all rifts, that you would heal all conflict, that you would heal all dissension and any words that should not have been spoken or things that should not have been done amongst the brethren. I pray forgiveness for every one of them. I speak forgiveness to all of my brothers and sisters, whatever they have done. I pray that if they humble themselves as I know they are today, that you would forgive their sin and cleanse them of all unrighteousness. And Father, I pray for this house that we would be a house that's a beacon of light, a hope, and the truth in this hour of darkness. And I pray, Father, that you give us uh, the, the grace, the blessing of finishing well before you. 
that we may be accounted worthy to escape those things which must surely come to pass. And we thank you for it. In Messiah's holy name, amen. amen. Somebody give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And again, I want to encourage every one of you, if you don't have a fold, you don't have to join Remnant House. I'm grateful for every one of you that visit us, though. You guys are awesome. I love seeing your comments. I love your notes. I love hearing your testimonies and all the things he's doing for you. But you may not be called to this house. You might be called somewhere else. And we just want to encourage you, wherever you belong, because we're in this together. Whoever is the head of that house, whoever is in charge of these different things, we're all in it together. There's no competition amongst the house of Israel. We are not competing with one another. We're in this to see every single soul deliver out of bondage. And so thank you to every one of you that get it, that understand. Thank you to those that are friends. And for those of you that this is your house, you demonstrate that. We don't demand it of you. We just observe it. Either it's your house or it's not. Now we know by the way you act. Amen. So there's no forms to fill out. We tried that. We had hundreds of people fill out forms and then didn't follow through. So we decided no more forms. I'm not going to have you fill out forms or register for anything or none of that. Either you're going to make this your house or you're not. Either this is where you have uh, gotten a word from Yahuwah that this is the assignment you have. And he gives you a word and says, remnant house is your house. Stay put. Until he says that to you, I expect you'll just visit. Amen. Once he gives you that word and this is your house, know that we pray for you. Know that we love you. Know that as you give and stand in support, that it's going for the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. Amen and amen. That is why we're here. That is what I've been doing. You've been watching me do it. Amen. And now you're partnering with me in it. So when he rewards this house, you will be rewarded as well. And I believe that his reward for us is great. I believe that we have to continue, though. We have to be faithful. We can't think about that right now. We have to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven and keep on pressing toward that mark, the high calling, which is in Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen and amen. And so thank you again for your giving, for your support, for your love, for your encouragements. I'm really grateful for those. And uh, I'm thankful to all of those who are in ministry right now who are pressing the, uh, you know, the truth out there. They're not uh, backing up. And those authorized fivefold ministers, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, we honor you, we respect you, and we are thankful for every one of you. May Yahuwah bless each and every one of you. And remember, Yahusha HaMashiach, he alone is King of Kings.
shepherd.